In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at MCPs. Now, MCPs has been uh, making the waves uh, over the past few months uh, for good reason, um, because MCPs have turned out to become um, one of the emerging protocols for how you build and distribute your um, agents. And what we're seeing, I mean, Anthropic came up with MCP last year, and since then, we've seen um, a number of big organizations adopt MCPs, you know, got ahead and built out MCP for their services, you know, the likes of Zapier, Stripe, uh, Shopify, all these organizations have built like amazing MCP servers. But I think what's most interesting is also other model, model providers like OpenAI have also adopted this approach to, um, you know, distributing, um, the tooling or the building blocks. And I think that's the way I like to see it. It's like the building blocks of building agents. You know, every single agent is, you know, an LLM model combined with uh, a bunch of tools. So these are functions or API calls or whatever it might be. Um, it's some prompts and it's some resources, you know, for RAG. And this is what MCP allows you to package up and distribute really easily. So this is becoming the, the standard. It's a protocol. And I really like it because it just really simplifies and allows you to um, put together, you know, very targeted solutions in the way of an MCP and, and, and allow multiple MCP clients to, to receive it. So the way it works is like you have an MCP server on one side, just, you know, similar to your client server relationship in most, uh, in your HTTP architectures. I uh, have a host and uh, you have a client, right? So the host is basically or the server is where the MCP uh, lives and the client calls that. Now in, in our example today, I'm going to be using a uh, line chain adapter to show you how the client side is going to work. I'm going to be using fast MCP. So fast MCP is one of the easiest ways for you to host your own MCP. And I'm going to be showing you an example of an MCP that I'm currently working on, which I am going to be uh, hosting and we're going to see how we interact with it. In fact, let's just go ahead and look at what the agent looks like. Uh, so I have built this agent in Slack and this agent basically looks at financial type news. So looks at a stock, does some analysis on that stock and returns information about it. So doing some financial research essentially. So let's go ahead and say, uh, give me a rundown of all the latest earning report from Salesforce, Apple, Nvidia. All right, let's see. It's actually uh, going ahead and trying to process my call. All right, so we can see it right here. We see essentially a concise summary of earnings report. So this is for Salesforce, uh, for Apple, as well as for Nvidia. Okay. So it says it was able to pull a thing for Apple and, and, and Salesforce. Um, so this is all the stuff, uh, from the latest one. So FY 2026, FY 2025, and you can see all that information, uh, right here. And it's all coming from, from Yahoo finance because our MCP server is basically designed to work um, like that. Now I'm gonna basically show you what our MCP looks like. Now, by the way, uh, this is a really important piece when you're building any MCP solution um, is to use the MCP inspector to look at what the MCP looks like. So uh, you can use uh, MPX, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the a way for you to run this on your system so that you're able to always see um, exactly uh, what resources or how a particular MCP is being served. Now, um, when it comes to serving MCPs, there are three ways to serve MCPs. There is the standard uh, input output approach, so STDIO, there's streamable HTTP and there's SSE. I believe SSE is gonna be deprecated soon, so but streamable HTTP allows you to stream your MCPs through um, HTTP, HTTP, which makes it very, very easy for you to deploy them on servers. So typically when you're working locally on your system, you use the STDIO, but when you're, you're working over the internet, and you want to kind of host your MCPs, the streamable HTTP is the way to go. Uh, MCPs also support allowing authentication. In my case, it's not gonna have authentication. Uh, so let's take a look at what's in my MCP. So MCPs, like I said, are made up of prompts, tools, and resources. So here, I don't have any resources here, by the way, right? So it's empty. But when it comes to prompts, you can see all the prompts that are powering my MCP. So one for 
um, stock summary, uh, sector comparison, prompt resource assessment, investment thesis. And then this is just like for handling Slack Markdown, because usually one of the most annoying things for me when I'm building um, a Slack application is that LLMs usually just return Markdown. And, uh, but I want my, <laughs> my my information in slack to be uh with slack markdown so i wrote some prompts that allows me to do it and you can actually see what the prompt looks like uh when you look at it i believe you should so okay actually i should enter a ticker so aapl as an example i can get the prompt so you can see the prompt right here right so this is my prompt just telling tell, telling it what it needs to do right now the start of the show for me is tools um, you know, makes it really easy for you to get tools. So all of our tools, as you can see, are basically Yahoo Finance uh, tools. We also have some SEC filing stuff here as well. So I think this goes and pulls information from an SEC filing uh, URL. This pulls financial statements if they're available. I don't think this is one. Okay, so you can see like there's a financial statement for Apple over the past year or so, um, you get dividends, recommendations, you just basically every single thing about, it. you can also get SEC filings as well. Um, so you can get like a ton of different interesting uh, information coming back, right? So you see all the information you get, like all the SEC filings, all the, um, you know, financial information about a company. So basically let's say you were distributing this as a financial uh, research MCP, even without the client knowing exactly how to go do this research, you'd be able to help them do it. And that's, I think that's what the fun part of MCPs are, makes it really easy for you to distribute um, well-packaged agent or agentic behavior and distribute it and, and different clients can access it. So here you see us interacting it with, with the tools uh, in, in inspector. Uh, you saw me kind of interact with it via Slack. Um, and you can also do, do it uh, via other clients as well. So let's go ahead and see how to build this. I use fast MCP. Fast MCP is amazing. It's, it's, it's truly the best way I think to build these types of MCP. So let's go and take a look at the code. So you see what's happening. So in my code here, I have uh, basically a server file as well as a client file. So the server file is basically where my actual um, uh, MCP server is uh, designed and then I'm going to show you the client which is how it's called and I've thrown in a slack client as well as a slack app manifest if you want to you know have the same sort of slack application on your end as well all right so let's go through this so first and foremost you want to use fast mcp like I said so go ahead and install fast mcp I'm using uh, yahoo finance so we want to also install yahoo finance um I visualize your fast mcp as you can see here so you want to give it a name um and you know give it like a title uh and then you want to define your tools so in this case I'm, I'm doing tools and prompts uh for tools i've defined a few tools here so get stock summary get sec filings get analyst targets and so on and so forth so all these are basically functions that i want my tool to be able to call and in this case i'm, I'm making it possible for my tool to accept like a ticker and that's basically what it's going to use to uh, make the call. So when I say give me Apple, it's going to convert it to AAPL and then it, it, it then runs. I'm going to actually show you how, you know, all the, the different tool, tool calling here uh, in my Langs, Langsmith where I'm observing how things are going. So you see all the tools that I have and then I have a few prompts. So these are all the prompts that I have as well. I'm actually going to go continue to bake this out into a more um, robust financial research MCP. Now, one of the cool things about fast MCP that I really love is that you could serve uh, multiple routes uh, here. So you could serve like your MCP basically as a route because that's essentially what you're doing. So this is the first, first part is serving your MCP as a route. But you could also serve custom routes as well if you wanted to. So like in this case, I'm just serving this route for health check kind of thing. Um, so you could serve either your HTTP, your MCP as HTTP as well as custom routes. And you're basically using fast API uh, behind the hood. So that's, that's basically it. That's how we set up our MCP server. Now for the client side, I'm using Langchain MCP adapters. I'm going to put, um, the, um, the link to the documentation in the description as well, as well as in the readme of this GitHub repo. But basically I found that this is one of the coolest ways to uh, actually interact with your um, MCP server. So as you can see here, we have like our 
our client's definition right here in client.py. We have this function that is called ask agent. And you can see that first and foremost, you, what you do is that you import this multi-server MC, MCP client, which allows you to actually run multiple MCPs, regardless of what type of transport they are. You can run multiple of them. In this case, we're just running our, our own MCP, which is this one. So our MCP is actually hosted on this URL. So we, we're passing in our MCPs here. And then we're passing in a question to a React um, agent, right? So with LangGraph, you have this Create React agent. So that's what we're using right here. So we're using that Create React agent. We're just asking questions of it and then returning our information back. That's essentially what we're doing. So that's all that is happening here. So you can see like this is where we're invoking our agent and we're then returning some kind of response. So before we continue, before we actually uh, get out of all of this, let's take a look at the actual run so you can see exactly what's happening whenever I make a run. So right, this was our run, right? Our run was get me a rundown of Salesforce, Apple and Nvidia. So this is basically showing us exactly what's going on in our run, right? So the agent gets the, the input. So in this case, give me a run and you can see right away what it started to do. It found the ticker. So CRM ticker. So it, it, it understood that this was a ticker calls the model, get a ticker, then it starts to make the function calls. So this is where, all, where it's doing all of the function calls. So it did get me SEC filing and it pulled that information back. Uh, get SEC filings, get SEC filings, which is interesting. Uh, so you got all that information back, right? Then it went ahead to summarize the filings, right? So it went ahead, pulled the filing from SEC and, and try to summarize it because it's a very big, long uh, summarization here, summarizing a bunch of them. And after doing the summarization, it it's passing it back to the agent, right? So it's, it gets all that information, pass it back to the agent. So the agent gets all the information and then uses that information to uh, return a response. All right, so that's why we get our, our final response over here. All right, so this is all of our response and that's what gets sent back uh, to Slack. So this is really cool. Like you can see like all the different tool calls that are happening. Now, and the, the amazing thing is that from a client's perspective, we didn't have to actually say anything. All we did from a client's perspective is to say, if you look at the, the input from the client side, we just said, give me a rundown of your latest earnings report. And the server is able to understand exactly all the stuff it needs to do. So this is really what's pretty amazing about MCPs. Hope you enjoyed that or learned from it. Um, if you did, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be making more uh, videos talking about MCPs, how to use them. Um, how amazing they are. And I've, I've just, I've just been spending a lot of my time building MCPs anyways, and I'm going to be maybe sharing with you guys, uh, some of the projects I'm working on in terms of like, um, some of the MCPs that I'm, I'm attempting to host until next time. Do have a great one.